Hello, that's a song called Gabriel's Message, and I first heard that song recorded by Sting back in probably 1987, 88, somewhere like that. I think on, might have been on an album called Wow Christmas or something like that, and he also, the next year I think came out with, I saw three ships uh, come sailing in on Christmas Day, and um, both versions were really great versions of the song. Then later, uh, here recently, in the last couple years, he released it On a Winter's Night, and he redid Gabriel's Message, but I really don't think that the newer version was even anywhere close to being as awesome as the original. But you can check them both out and judge for yourself. So this melody is actually, I found out, is an old Basque uh, Christmas song, a Christmas carol, and from what I understand, the Basque people come from between France and Spain, and they have a language that, from what I understand, isn't even connected to the Indo-European languages, and nobody really knows where it came from, which is kind of interesting. And so the Basque people have this song, and they uh, was it was one of their Christmas songs. So Sting took it and kind of arranged it, and I wish that I could play all the harmonies that he did on the um, 1987 or 88 version of the song, but um, if, you know, maybe someday I'll be able to sit down and try to figure out some of the backup stuff. But this is kind of a simple arrangement of the tune that can be played either as a duet or as, as a, um, you know, played by itself the way I just played it. Um, as a duet, you would play it with two mandolins, and one mandolin would play the bottom part, and another mandolin would play the top part at the octave, or you could go back and forth and play it where the first mandolin plays the song on the bottom and then strums through some chords while the second mandolin plays the melody at the top, and then on the third time through, both mandolins could come in and play the uh, song together. So it could be done however you want to do it, but what's nice is both parts are exactly the same because I'm in uh, ADAD tuning, which is... A, D, A, D. A, D, A, D. Or if you want to tune to me, I don't know if I'm exactly an A440 because I just grabbed the mandolin today. But. That sounds a little off, but. Close enough for today. Anyhow, I will read off, and I'm going to be posting this uh, tab on my uh, blog, and also I'm hoping, I'm writing a book on, uh, I'm actually writing a book on how to play mandolin in Dead Man's Tuning, and I'm hoping it will be a series that will be picked up by the publisher very soon, and one of the books, the volumes in the series that I want to put out is a Christmas volume, so when it's out, probably in the next couple years, but when it does come out, I'll let you know and you can go check it out, but until then I'm going to post a few Christmas songs that people can learn to play as we're getting closer to Christmas. And this one, uh, they'll be on my blog, and my blog is at http uh, williminix.blogspot.com. It's down there in the bottom of the screen, as you can see underneath my name. And so this uh, is how you play Gabriel's Message. We're also called The Angel Gabriel from Heaven Came, if you see it in a hymnal. And it starts out on the bottom part, on the open fret, the open, well, not for the open position of the first string of, of the, uh, in this case, what would be the low A string, and it's played between, primarily between these two strings, although it does, could get up to the, uh, to the um, open string later if you want to play, but I play it mainly just on the two strings. So you got open, open, then. That now we're on the uh, D string. Three, two, five, three, two, open, two, open, down that other string. And then open, open, three, two, five, three, two, open, four, open, three, three, five, three, two, three, five, seven, or you could play open because they're the same note. Seven, and that's done twice. Five, three, two, three, five, three, two, open two, and then open on that string below. Open three, two, three, open four, down on the A string, and then open on the D string. Now 
I'm going to repeat that again and then real quick and then I'm going to go and show you the next octave up which is exactly the same but open open three two five three two open two open 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 three two five three two open four open three three five three two three five and I like to slide around seven seven three uh, five three two Three five three two open two open open three two three open four open. Now if you go to the next octave up, it's on these two strings up here. So it's open open three two five three two open two open 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 three two five three two open four open three three five three two three five seven seven five three two now what I like to do when I play this part is I go um, let's go back to the three three so I go kind of a little turn five seven five three five three two and you don't have to play it like that but that's just something I do and then on the when I play both parts together what I do is I alternate pick back and forth and it just kind of gives it that neat classical kind of sound see that's the thing a lot of times you can there are two different approaches to music I guess the first approach is play everything exactly the way it's written which is okay and you know that's kind of a more classical approach and then there's kind of the fake it method, which is what a lot of musicians do, where they just kind of take licks and fills and stuff that kind of sound like a certain style of music, and they throw it in, and it ends up making it sound more that way. And so that's kind of what I advocate a lot. I mean, I think whatever sounds pleasant to the ear is good enough to to uh, play. And a lot of guys, when they record, they're... They don't craft their stuff necessarily. A lot of times it just comes out spontaneously. So, you know, but as you learn a lot of these licks and fills, you can use them to craft melodies of your own. And that's one that, that I like to throw in. It makes it sound just a little more classical to me. So where were we? Now we're at the, um, at the bottom part. So three five three two open two open on the next string down open three two three open four on the next string down and then I just strum to end it. Now to give you just a little bit of um, I guess counsel on how to play both of the parts together, I just keep in mind that I'm sliding my finger. I'm not trying to, you know, play. I'm just sliding my finger up and down almost like it's just a slide, you know, on a guitar, except I'm only playing on the two strings at a time. So I'm either playing on these two strings, which I don't know if you can see that, kind of a way to, to, to play like that and I have to normally I'm playing with my hand like this and to do this I have to move my hand up a little bit and I kind of bring the mandolin over and you could use your other fingers too if you want to change it around but I don't do that much So when I play is and some people wonder why I write um, a lot of duets, it's because I want to be able to play with my students 
And so I write different parts so that way I can play a part and the student can play a part. And I found that a lot of times even simple melodies where they're just played an octave apart really sound nice together when they're played on two different mandolins. And a lot of times the mandolin isn't usually used as a solo instrument. It's used as a soloing instrument where in a lot of bands it will be it will play solos but very rarely do you find like you know artists that just play the mandolin and don't have a backup band and yet with with um, two mandolins or in this type of tuning you don't really need a backup band to get a lot a, a nice full cool sound and um, and then if you play with two mandolins you get a really interesting uh, sound that you wouldn't normally get you know with with other types of instruments and then the other thing is too you can also rearrange this and play a mandolin and a guitar duet or you know mandolin and banjo or even dulcimer or whatever whatever instruments you may have at your disposal or players that might be around so I hope that that helped you a little bit I hope you enjoyed this song go to my blog and check out more of my videos and you can also look at my channel you could subscribe if you want to because I try to put new videos out all the time sometimes I may get caught up on other work and not get to do any videos but when I do you'll be sure to find out about them and then you can learn some of the new songs that I'm learning and as always if there's something that you'd like to learn feel free to drop a note in the comment section or shoot me an email and I will try to uh, figure out how to play a song for you, and you can learn it in Dead Man's Tuning or ADAD Tuning or any of these alternate tunings that I've been working in. So I hope you have a good day. God bless, and we'll see you next time.